by now, you've likely seen the body camera video of an Aurora officer pistol whipping and choking a man. The officer in that video has since resigned and is facing felony charges. He also joined the force with a criminal record. And tonight, our Denver 7 investigative team is asking how he was hired in the first place. Investigative reporter Jennifer Kovaleski tonight digs into the independent commission in charge of hiring Aurora's police, an old school system that many say needs to change. I'm going to tell you this video will shock your conscience. It's this disturbing video. Help! Help! Showing Aurora officer John Hopper pistol whipping a man 13 times. Get on his face! And threatening to pull the trigger. You move, I'll shoot you! That moved us to delve into the troubled record of the officer wearing the body cam. A criminal record Chief Vanessa Wilson says she knew nothing about until after she released the video. I was I made aware of that charge yesterday morning. I have no control over any basic applicant. Uh, that is a Civil Service Commission question. Which begs the question, how was he hired? Given a badge to protect and serve, even though he had a misdemeanor on his record for getting drunk and pointing a shotgun at his roommate. Should someone with a gun charge be able to be a police officer? I don't think so. I do have concerns with a prior gun charge. That officer absolutely should not have been hired. To understand how it happened, we have to go back to 2018. That's when Officer John Hubbard first became an Aurora officer. As you heard the chief say, the city's Civil Service Commission made the decision to hire him, not Aurora's chief or anyone in the department. Do you believe that the police chief should have some say in new hires? I do think the police chief should be involved in that. Curtis Gardner serves on Aurora City Council. He also chairs the Public Safety Committee. It's coming forward at our Public Safety Committee to find out how it was that he was hired. As that investigation continues, Gardner says he's pushing for change to Aurora Civil Service Commission, a five-person board with a lot of power and the final say on all new police hires. And that's why I think we need to find out what we knew and when we knew it. We reached out to the current Civil Service Commission and we're scheduled to do an on-camera interview. But Chair Jim Weeks backed out at the last minute. The city said a former commission knew about Hobart's record and hired him anyways. It also says there's no evidence they ever talked to his former roommates, who accused him of being drunk and pointing a gun at one of them. I do have concerns, though, if a past civil service commission knew about it and still made the decision to hire this individual. We did some digging to find out more about those former commissioners, and here's what we uncovered. They had a wide range of backgrounds, from teaching to firefighting. One even served on the Aurora City Council. They all had two things in common. They lived in Aurora, and they were registered to vote. And what about the current board? We were surprised by what we learned about two of the commissioners. Harold Johnson was fired from Denver Fire in 2015 and lied to council about it earlier this year. But with a heated 6-5 to five vote, council decided to give him a second chance. We found out that he lied on the application, he lied in the interview. I'm on the side of letting him have a chance. There's five yeses and the motion does not pass. The wife of Vice Chair A.J. McDonald actually worked for the city when he was appointed by council. She was later hired by Aurora Police. We also took a closer look at the commission's background investigators. As the name implies, they do the background checks on the officers before they're hired. There are two married couples in that group something Councilman Juan Marcano says should never happen. It's extremely troubling to me. And there are other ethical requirements for various branches of government where that would not be allowed. And the fact that it is allowed for our civil service uh, is shocking to me. The city tells us the couples aren't in supervisor roles and are hired as part-time contractors. I don't think that we should have folks who are related, even if they don't supervise one another. Denver 7 Investigates also discovered new recruits don't meet with anyone from the police department until their first day on the job. Do you see the need for changes with the Civil Service Commission? I do. Going back to our question about how Officer Hobart was hired, all officers have to be certified by Colorado's Peace Officer Standards and Training, also known as Colorado POST. Colorado Post told us the misdemeanor Hobart pled guilty to is not one that would keep an officer from being certified. It's a system problem. John DiCarlo is a former police chief turned law enforcement expert at the University of New Haven. He says Officer Hobart's record should have been a red flag. Maybe uh, politically or legislatively that should be looked at. It's so very important that we have accountability with these law enforcement officers. State Representative Leslie Harrod has led the charge for police reform in Colorado. Do you believe the law needs to change in terms of what charges allow an officer to be post-certified? 
it's definitely something that I will look into, but there needs to be a, an audit of who is working for you in your law enforcement agency. A review of who's wearing a badge. Don't shoot me, please. Stop fighting. To try to prevent another officer from going too far. I'm concerned that there are more officers like this that, are, that continue to be on the streets in Colorado. We also sat down with Aurora's police chief. She says she supports changes to the commission. We also asked her about when she first learned about Hobbert's record. It just was a bit of salt in the wound, I think, for the community. I think it was shocking for them. We'll have that part of the story tomorrow night on Denver 7 News at 10. I'm investigative reporter Jennifer Kovaleski. So let's take a closer look at the history of that Civil Service Commission. In Aurora, it was created in 1967 to ensure the city would hire the most qualified people to serve as police officers and firefighters. There are five members on the commission. Each serves three-year terms. Now, not all departments in the U.S. utilize a Civil Service Commission. Some of the departments do their own hiring. The benefit of a Civil Service Commission preventing hires based on favoritism and not merit.